folks, welcome to another Besides the Norm podcast. My name is Scuba. We are here with Monk at the other side of the table. I'm getting mere mental as we do that. Aye, what up? What 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 up? What up? Is that the way you're going to start this? Uh, you're going to start it with a hip hop styley. What up? And we will continue from then. Yes, indeed. Fantastic. And then I say indeed because mm-hmm. I'm a yep. white middle class <laughs> Tory English yes. guy. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we have, and I'm going to say this, and we'll figure out if this is okay to say or not. But we have a still game success story. Yes. The, Wait, oh, we're officially still going with it. The only Asian still game fan. I know it's false because Vietnam. Is it definitely false? Well, Scott Reid said Vietnam has a big following. That's a good point. Yeah. But uh, Victoria is Asian's uh, only still game fan. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sticking with it. Like, I would say proper fan as well. We're going to bring, we'll bring your volume up, Victoria. How are you doing, Victoria? Good, good. I was very heartbroken to know that I am not the. Only Asian still game fan. <laughs> well, we're sticking with it, so you could like delude yourself into believing that it's true. For still. this podcast, you're the only known Asian still game fan. For There's this a podcast. point. We don't know any other Asian still we game fans. We don't know any. So no. that's a great reason to get you on. <laughs> uh, also, we could speak to other still game cast members about a specific Asian still game fan. Like we have Michael Hines. Yes. Um, is this going out after or before? This is going out after. After, okay, right. So we've just had Michael Hines on. Yes. So we could have spoken to Michael Hines about you being on, but you won't have been on. That's a good point. Yep. So Michael yep. Hines is not going to know about the, the one list. <laughs> because this fan. this hasn't happened yet. Yep. Obviously. So you could ask a question. You could. I suppose you could ask a I question. I think she did ask a question. Yep. She asked if it was a party direct and was a pushing it to international audiences, I think, and something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, perfect. Yeah, that was my question. If um, Asian audiences, I mean, not Asian, I, like international audiences are, like, intended. Yeah. Mm. But she meant Asian, mm-hmm. because she was, what, well, mayor still game for her. <laughs> just trying to keep all the still game for you, Victoria. Yeah. <laughs> it's very, very bad. So Victoria also has her own podcast. Could you tell us a wee bit about yes, that? That's not the only thing uh, about uh, Victoria. She just doesn't do still game all the time. This is another part of Victoria's life. <laughs> yeah, no, I I wish when Craig first introduced still game to me, I actually did not understand <laughs> it at all. Yeah, I spent I spent so... most of the time trying to explain what words mean. Yeah, mm. yeah, <laughs> makes sense. So I've learned a lot. Yes. No, you're right. Like I do have uh, <laughs> I do have a a podcast. It's called the Truly Other Podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's um just about normalizing difficult conversations, like about uh female issues, women issues, uh politics, social issues, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Would we count as like a Technical difficult conversation, like like in the language, like the <laughs> language barrier. All oh, right. Mm. Um. Not really. Is what I guess I'm looking a little for. Bit. <laughs> I was I mean, enough, a... I feel like there's enough slang in Fife mm-hmm. that, that could... it becomes difficult. Because yeah. I mean, I've heard the folk coming for. Well, I'm not going to name drop, but the folk coming for Kelty to Kennaway. And then really, confused. what the fuck is he saying? Let's test it. Victoria, have you heard the word baffies before? Mm, no. No? <laughs> no. It just means slippers. No, what is it? It just means slippers. Oh. But I think you know, like, Bern. No. Oh, no. Just... Wayne? No. <laughs> <laughs> they say weird all the time in still game. No, I don't really pay attention to that. You don't have to know like the specific meaning of the thing to know what they're talking about. No, I no longer consider you Scottish. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So, so, so what what sort of conversations have you been having on your podcast? How, like, what kind of guests have you been having on so far? Um. So far, I've interviewed a lot of life coaches, 
Mm-hmm. Life coaching because I mean it's it's really like interesting to me. It's not really therapy, but it kind of is. So um yeah, life coaches and most recently uh women's rights advocate for Muslim and brown communities. Mm-hmm. So we talked about like feminism in the context of religion, and that was really interesting. Right. How did that go? Was that was that successful? Was there anything that you didn't expect? Was there things that you were conscious of that you didn't really want to bring up? Things like that. Um, I guess I I being in an Asian context, I would say I sort of expected a little bit of what came up during that conversation. Mm -hmm. But I think it would be surprising to know that it actually existed. So, for example, um, the guest, she actually told me that uh, in Muslim communities, the men can actually just say a specific word and that would mean that the marriage that he has with his wife would, it's like an official divorce. But the women cannot like they don't have that same power. Jesus. So that was really interesting. Like that was an official thing. Mm-hmm. Seems really unfair. It does because again, maybe like sometimes that word could, could come out under like, oh, you've like really annoyed me. You've like moved my chair, mm-hmm. and then they could be like, oh, that word, and then they've just like ruined their fucking lives for no reason. I because men have an insane ego trip mm-hmm. when they when they have control over something. Yeah. And I feel like that's just going to be exacerbated when yeah. it comes into that context. I feel like that word just comes up a lot just over like the most menial things. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And oftentimes, um, if the women are left with the children and then they, uh, in specific like communities, are not allowed to work or don't earn as much, then they would have a lot to deal with. Mm. That's okay. sad sometimes. So we... we uh, a couple of years ago, me, you, Stephen, yeah, and uh, a few friends of ours went to a, a mosque in Dunfermline. No, yeah. and uh, this guy was doing the cosmological argument for God, and being an atheist, I was like, "Oh, are you now? Let's <laughs> find it." So we went along with another few people who are quite uh, big in the atheist community, yeah, sort of thing, but not quite, big, but like. They quite like atheist arguments. They quite yeah. like that debate. So we went along to see what it was all about. And um, because of a lot of the things I'd watched about religion, I expected uh, the men to be saying stuff and the women to be relatively quiet. Mm. And uh, I was surprised to learn that that was not the case. I actually turned out the opposite. It was, it was just two women that were there. Aye. And it was a group of like maybe five or six dudes. Aye. And then our group. Aye. That was how much people decided in the Muslim community to turn out to a debate. <laughs> um, at, at least for that area, anyway, at least. But uh, the two women seemed to speak like a lot more than what the In the second half, did. at least. Aye, aye. In the first half, it seemed to be us yeah, speaking yeah. the most. And then the second half, it was the women like, but what about this? What about this? We didn't really hear these rights. We didn't hear these things. Why, what, what about us? Yeah. And I was like, oh, dope. I was, like, I was totally wrong about yeah. What was going to happen here? Yeah, and that was nice to see. Yeah, um, it could could it possibly be the influence of like the non Asian environment mm. that maybe it was in a context that was more accepted, um, like to voice out your concerns. I mean, if that happened in first of all, it won't happen in Singapore. But if it did, yeah, there that... wouldn't be a lot of people who are speaking outside of where they're allowed to. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. That, that could be it. I mean, Dunfermline. It's hardly Saudi oh, Arabia. Well, so what, what, what's it like in uh, Singapore? Like, um, As far as like religion goes, is it a huge thing over there? I don't. I know very little about like uh, Singapore and stuff, so I'm, I'm going to ask a lot of questions right. about this. So what's it like, like relig- religious-wise... In Singapore, um, so in Singapore we we are relatively multicultural. So um, the four main 
races are uh, Chinese, Malay, Indian, and Eurasian, or just basically other. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the religion is mostly, it's not like one dominant religion. Each culture like is free to um, practice their own religion in their own way. So we will have everything from Buddhism to uh, Hinduism, Islam, basically coexisting in one neighborhood. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so it's not like over here where it's like mostly predominantly, I would say, atheist. Uh, actually, I think it's... An, yeah. I think atheism isn't really that, like, popular here. I think most people have a religion. I mean, on the street, sometimes you will see people, like, um, from churches coming up to you to, like, um, promote their church. <laughs> yes. And, um, yeah, that is more, like, commonplace to have a religion. Okay. So, like me being an atheist is is it's not something that you would say like on at a dinner table. Mm-hmm. People would still like look at you and be kind of shocked. So do that you... was what I was going to ask. I was going to ask if you were all okay with talking about the fact that you were an atheist. Oh, of course, yeah. I talk about it all the time. All right, okay. That's good. That's are you good. the are you the annoying person who's like, ah, oh, but God doesn't exist, so get up, you. <laughs> Yes, very much so. <laughs> Amazing. So how does that go down? Um, It depends. I mean, if sometimes if I'm feeling crazy at like a family dinner, I'll, I'll just like, um, when someone says, oh, let's all like pray or something, and then I'll be the one to say like, no thanks. <laughs> Why are we thanking God? You made <laughs> the dinner. Yeah. Why, what's happening here? Like, great. Love it. <laughs> yeah. And then you'll get like the, the awkward stare. Yep. But if I'm with my friends and then like they all know that I'm pretty vocal about that. So I guess they just aren't surprised at this point. Mm-hmm. So n- nobody argues with you. Nobody's like, but how could you not believe in God? Nobody's thrown Pascal's wager at your name. Um... Well, like, do I get asked? Normally, no, because people find that it's a bit of a taboo to ask. All right. Mm. But but once you've expressed the fact you're an atheist, no one's tried to convince you that you're wrong and that you're going to hell or whatever. Yeah. No, Um. unless I'm, like, on the street and then someone from, like, a church comes up to me. Mm. I Actually, the other day I was approached by this girl from a church called um, God the Mother. Mm. and like being a feminist I was intrigued I was like wait what God the mother like a female figure you've never heard that no yeah. so I, I listened to her speak for a while and then I realised it was um kind of cultish <laughs> ah mm. so I yeah so I like started telling her that oh no thanks I'm an atheist and then she would uh, she asked me why and I feel like that's such a weird question to ask. Like, it's gonna have to answer. Like, what do you mean, why? <laughs> but, my usual answer is, well, because I don't believe your shit. Yeah. That's, but that's I feel it. like they, they want, they want me, they want, because yeah. the reason I'm not they an want, atheist they want is a, philosoph- a philosoph- minute explanation. Well, that's, they want a philosophical reason, and they just therefore want you to talk so much that they. So they get under your skin a little bit, mm. and then they can push their religion on you, and you're therefore transformed into a Scientologist. Yes. That's exactly what they want to happen. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, okay, if, like, in the course of history, let's say there has been a total of 3,000 gods that people believe in, mm-hmm. I just don't believe in one more. Yeah. And that's a problem. She's that's been a, watching Ricky Gervais. That's a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was just watching a Ricky Gervais and Lawrence Krauss talking. Right. And yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, you they, you, yeah. You can't you can't say what's happening yet. I know, I know. Yeah. Put me off there. 
Uh, yeah, so uh, basically, uh, they were basically talking about the same stuff. I didn't have a point. Who, who was that in Lawrence Krauss? Was that? Who, who in Lawrence Krauss? Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais in Lawrence Krauss. Oh, I've not seen that. you know not seen that? No. Uh, Lawrence Krauss, a famous scientist, never heard of him? Huh? No, I've heard of Lawrence Krauss. Right, okay, okay. Yeah. It's Ricky Gervais I've never heard of. <laughs> He's got a podcast, check it out. Right. When we're, we're, Lawrence or Ricky? Right, shit, we'll try and get him on and see if, see if he can come on the podcast or Ricky. something. Ricky? No, no, the other one. Oh, yeah, I right, heard. Right. Heard what? Nothing's happened. This is going to be fun. <laughs> Nothing has happened, officially. <laughs> We're going to have to cut that bit out. Sorry. Fuck. No, it's Scott White. Nothing's, <laughs> nothing has happened. Nothing's happened. Nobody knows. Yeah. Sorry. It, uh, yeah, I was trying to make a joke, but it's fine. It, it, it doesn't matter. You've got uh, Ricky Gervais coming on the podcast, is what's <laughs> happening. It's a well known thing. It's going yeah. to happen. After Michael Hines comes The day that happens. The day you invite Ricky Gervais to the podcast, oh my god! I feel like I feel like Ricky Gervais is like the first level boss in like Streets of Rage too. Fuck off! And like, yeah, so you get like Ricky Gervais. He's like the first level boss in podcasting. Uh, but Joe Rogan is like the <laughs> sort of that's when you completed the game. You, yeah. You can keep playing the game if you want. Like it doesn't really matter because you've like completed the final boss. But you're in like free roam mode. <laughs> you can just sort of get anybody you want, really. And you like, you have all the cheats in, and like you can just get anybody you want on the podcast because you've been on Joe Rogan's podcast. Here's the thing, though: Do you get Steve Merchant on first or Ricky Gervais, who's like easier? Well, to you, get have, on? you have to like, ease your way in by getting Steve Merchant, and I think. But Steve Merchant was on the Ricky Gervais show. Steve Merchant, not as big. I just. And yeah, he's, he's, okay. Nah. Fine, fuck you. <laughs> so we want to delve into a bit of a Victoria's career, if possible. Um, could you tell us sort of like what's because you have done quite a few things, and could you explain sort of like from like sort of after high school and like what sort of jobs you got into up to your like recent... your education and career? Could yes, you go into your education and career, please. Um, oh my god, where do you want me to start? Uh, your education. And then your career. <laughs> <laughs> just 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 go through okay. like what you wanted what you planned to do at high school mm-hmm. and then sort of what made you go into whatever uh, education. I know these answers. I'm just trying to make it vague so that you've got yeah. something to say. Tell uh, us your dreams and then <clears throat> what you ended up actually doing. Yeah. Okay, okay, let's start from, like, primary school. Wait, is the education, like, set up the same? Is it called primary school or is it called yes, elementary school? Yes, it's called primary school, yeah. yeah. We have primary school, then high school afterwards. Okay, so primary school, you get what I mean? Like, yeah, there's the ages, like, 5 to primary school, 11, 12. Yeah, like, there's, like, 6 years, right, or something? There's 7 here, but yeah, sure. We're spending too long. Okay. We are spending a bit too long on this. <laughs> okay, so for uh, primary school, I went to an all girls school, and it's it's a pretty well known school here in Singapore. Um, and there's actually like a family affiliation there. So, um, my grandmother actually went to that school, and my mother did, and my younger sister also did. And I was the only one who did not manage to get into the secondary school that's affiliated to that primary school. So I sort of broke that chain there. And then I ended up going to a neighborhood school, which was new to me because at primary six, at that level, like I did not know how to speak like the local slang. Okay. And mm. so I was then thrown into an environment where everyone was just speaking Chinese and that local slang, and I just felt out of place. And then suddenly, very like like the snobby one in school <laughs> and because is, I couldn't speak the the local slang. And this is in the, your your local area as well. You can't you couldn't speak your local slang at your local school. Yeah. Well, what? Yeah, because in. In the all girls school, like I was, sur- I had like American friends and like in- a lot of international friends. So everyone just spoke re- like good English. Yeah. And then when I got to secondary school, which is I think your high school, mm-hmm. yeah, it 
like I immediately like I did really well in English and then that made me sort of a target <laughs> because like I I did well like I performed well mm-hmm. so so yeah and then so from that like experience like being a failure from a very young age I then did not have very high expectations of myself for like my education so when I did my O levels I actually was prepared to get into the lowest scoring like institution like tertiary institution Mm -hmm. and so when I went into um the O level like examination hall like when we get our results I actually got I did well enough to get into a junior college, which is sort of the the better institution and the quickest way to get into university. So that was a big surprise to me. <laughs> and so in junior college, I did a uh, an arts sort of course. I studied, I can't remember now. Um, Oh, econs. So economics, literature, um, China studies in English, and math. Yeah. Maths, not just just for any Scottish yeah. people listening. Uh, not math, not math and vitamins. <laughs> no. Um. Yeah, I hate that economics. Um, I hate math. So and they, China studies is very boring. What what is China studies? Is that Chinese language so, or just China history and stuff? Yeah, yeah. So like how the Chinese government is set up, um Chinese history and like its its policies, its um yeah, just basically everything about China. It's everything about its like political, social, economic structure. Mm-hmm. And that bored you. Yeah, <laughs> I know you would love it. So here, here's the thing, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll explain why I said the meth thing because that's going to make me look racist. When I first spoke to Victoria, she's. I thought you said the meth thing just because it sounded like she said meth. It did. Right. That's why I'm saying I'm going to explain because it makes me sound racist. Right. But I'm going to explain why I said it. Okay. Uh, the first time I spoke to Victoria, she said a word, and I for sure thought she said meth. Right. And so for the rest of the conversation, I was like, huh. We were just openly talking about, <laughs> about meth. <laughs> and it turned out it was maths. And when she, when she talks about uh, how she was worried about our, our education levels, this was like when I first noticed the huge difference between Asian culture and Scottish culture. Right. She was the lowest prong of education, she yeah. felt. I don't know if it's true or whether she's worried about it. But then she had, like, maths books on her, on her bookshelf and stuff, and I'm like, no one in Scotland has that mm. unless you're at the top tier of education. Yeah. So it, it just put into context how different Asian culture is and how different Definitely. Uh, Scottish culture is. Yeah, there, there's nobody, like... Uh, that I know personally that I've had any sort of textbook yeah. uh, on a shelf behind mm. them. No chance. Every child has a math textbook or a science textbook or both or all of them somewhere in their room. <laughs> yeah. yeah, crazy. Every child here, yeah. So what you should do is you should move to a scummy country where... <laughs> We don't value education, yes. and then you'll be the smartest person in the in the country. As we d- we don't value it because of, because it's free, <laughs> so we don't respect it. Are you saying that it should be expensive? Saying that it should be free. Good. So you can disrespect it later on, right? <laughs> but yeah, that's what I would suggest to you: is you move to a a, a dumber country. And be like a, a big fish in a small pond, I'd love to. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You'd be, you'd be much... You are saying here. Well, or then, are you saying America? Yeah, America's... <laughs> broad, broad, like one of, I like, mean, if you were America, you're Einstein. Quickly. <laughs> At least here we've got a bit of smart about us. We've got mm-hmm. a bit of wit. And America is just... 
Who? Not in this town, son. Not in this town. They, they still haven't fully evolved to human yet. <laughs> We've still all got tails. So in America, I'll tell you something funny. Like, I, I went to an American university. Um, the, the like, Singapore campus of that university, the American university. And how it's set up here in Singapore is they believe that, like, because Asians study really hard, we don't actually have a summer break. Huh. So... Yeah, so like between like each semester or, or term, um, we have like one week uh, of a break and then we go on to the next one. And so I did like a double major and I finished it in like three years, which is pretty fast. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, so that's a stereotype that seems to be true, Very that true, Asians huh? are just smarter or at least more willing to... Uh, Lem. Well, yeah, but I guess it's because, like, no, like, there is no alternative. I mean, if you don't, then it's kind of like you're falling behind everyone else because everyone kind of has a degree or a diploma and something here. And if you don't have one, then you are immediately, like, the on the losing end. Mm. Yeah, but that's what I mean. If you don't have one here, it's kind of like, eh. You'll go job at kill. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm not explaining care. And that's it's not, it's not like a bad thing. Yeah, no, no, not at all. It's just sort of, no, you've got a different job. That's fine. Yeah. There used to be, I think it was a lot worse uh, back in the day. Like, there used to be, like, um, people that worked in factories got a lot of shit uh, from a lot of people. But not to the extent that, like, you, like you're like you sort of t- talking about there. But, um, yeah. Actually, but, back in the, like, 50s, 60s, factories were good, a, good a lot, jobs. Yeah, that was a good point, actually, aye. I'm thinking about, like, fast food workers and stuff. They get, like, some fucking Oh, uh, they still got a lot of shit, but... They get some, like, mad disrespect, which that's just is fucking crazy. the occasional elitist dickhead yep. that has no idea about life. That mm. they've... To, to be that much of a dick to somebody that works at McDonald's, which is a really, really hard job, mm-hmm. you have to have sailed through life with zero issues mm-hmm. because that's a level of arrogance that I cannot fucking stand that shit. Definitely, man. definitely. You end up having stickers on the back of your car with locally hated. Yes. On it. Oh. That's a real story. Dickhead. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so after your education, what uh, what kind of work did you get straight into and uh, what sort of led you up to present day? Okay, yeah. So um, I went to university um, after finishing my A-levels. And then I in university, I did like communications and psychology because I couldn't decide which one to do, so I did both. Asian. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then in in university I did a class on gender communication and it was really interesting to me um, perspectives on gender and um, how and the messages that were being like fed from the media and how that doesn't always tell you with our own perspectives and how they're both interrelated so I I sort of hyper focus on that I think so after university I am now interning at um, BBC Studios in Singapore and then heading to London later this year to do a master's in gender media and culture so, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Sorry, Stephen's had a, a fit here and he's uh, having to leave because he's a mutant. So I'm just going to shame him quickly. Uh, you're a mutant, Stephen. Uh, yeah, so after your university, you went and... You're now, you're now working at the BBC, right? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. And uh, what is it you're doing there? I'm in marketing, so the short answer is I'm on Facebook all the time. Nice. Same. <laughs> that's what my job is. <laughs> is, it, is it fun? Do you like it? I think I do a better job at it. Than, than me? Hmm? You think you do a better job than me? Yeah. Have you seen how much status he's our type? And they're all... 
extremely interesting. <laughs> so I want extremely well thought out. Everybody wants to read everything. Exactly. So I won. <laughs> Stephen has joined us. Cool. Trying to keep myself incognito, but fine. Thank you. Yeah, but I feel like there was nothing that was my fault there. No, it was so, particularly my fault. Yeah. Um, we've got something, yep. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> so, could you explain a bit more about your work at the BBC? Uh, you were sort of doing the graphics for, like, the iPlayer and stuff like that. Could you go a bit into, like, how you got that job? Um, I actually don't know how, and I, I did not expect to. So... When I was doing my job search while in university, I really was just sending applications to everything I could find. And on LinkedIn, I came across the ad for a marketing intern at BBC Studios. And the thing about LinkedIn is certain applications can have an easy apply option. And at the time that I was applying, I saw that there were over 200 applicants but they still had this easy apply thing and all you had to do was just click on it and, and it will send your profile through. Mm-hmm. Love that. And so I didn't have to do anything and I, was, I thought like, why not? <laughs> so out of pure laziness, I just sent in an application like that. And then I was actually at a course one day. Um, it was a sexual assault first responder course. And then halfway I got several calls and I was just one like panicking, like what that anonymous number is. And so I called back, and it turned out to be the um, my manager, who's now at at BBC Studios. So okay, That's yeah, it. purely coincidental, I think. <laughs> so what year was this? This was twenty nineteen. Mm, yeah. So just before the the global bastard. The ongoing global bastard. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So how long did you yeah, get to so I was a normal really lucky. job? How long was it a normal like job a before it job? became a, an unnormal job of home working and not being able to see each other and wearing masks straight from Mortal Kombat and stuff like that? No, I, I started like being able to go to the office every day and like sitting at a desk with the rest of my team and I mean that seems so distant now we've been working from home for a year now oh my god <laughs> mm. I was going to say um, does Singapore have the much a similar thing as like uh, Japan and China like where they, where they sort of actively wear masks a lot of the time anyway uh, when people are out oh no no it's no. a weird thing um, yeah if you are wearing a mask, you're either sick or like people would just stare at you. It's not like a fashion statement like it is um, elsewhere. Well, I, I, I just assumed that like that would be could, <clears throat> the way COVID has went now. That I assume that's going to be like a natural progression for us, at least uh, at this so. si- at least side of the this side of the world. That when people are having symptoms of uh, some sort of illness, even just like having a sort of a terrible cough, a rubbish cough, or whatever. Um, just put a mask on when you go out. Like I'm just assuming that's going to become part of the uh, natural thing to do. Hopefully, not really. I think, like, even if if you're just like having a flu here, like people will just continue going into work. It's not a thing that you will like. Really, I mean, people just try and hide it. It's a normal thing. If you get yeah. a flu, it's just. I think it's normal. It's a constant thing here as well. I've, I've had to do it myself with different jobs and stuff. You sort of decide that you're going to go in. You're like, which, I need the money. so stupid because, mm-hmm. like, then you're making somebody else sick and if they're more yeah. sick than you, they can't st- They can't go in. So they're going to lose money because you refuse to just stay yeah. at home because you've got that's a it. virus. And everybody does it. That's the, that's the annoying thing. It spreads really quickly. It happens all And you're, like, shamed time. if you don't. Yeah, stick with it. I remember, uh, and this was annoying because I, I usually get like a summer cold, or so. I don't know why it always, just always happens. But it was like mid summer. I started work at a pound shop over here, and uh, mm-hmm. I think I was there for like maybe two weeks or something, and then I got hit with that cold sort of thing. And I was like, 
I'm going to have to take off a day during the summer. I'm going to have to phone my boss and say I've got a fucking cold during the summer. She's immediately going to be like, yeah, okay, yeah cool. So I, I sent her a message just saying, like, I've got a cold. I'm not going to come in. I don't want to really infect anybody. And she says, hey, do what you have to do. I was like, okay. Really passive-aggressive. Passive-aggressive, so I was like, I'm fucking staying off, that's what I have to do. Oh, or she was saying, I do what you have to do, that's fine. Nah, it was passive-aggressive. All oh, right, okay. You, you, you've met my boss. <laughs> Which passive. one? The one we met at the at Pride. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All, right. All right. Yeah, she wasn't very nice. <laughs> that's okay. really fun, like a fun boss. Huh? Oh, she wasn't? That is not normal here. Well, fun bosses aren't normal, did you say? Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, right, she wasn't just, fun. Yeah. Oh, she wasn't fun either, no. I don't think I've met a fun boss. Well, the, the funny thing about that boss, and if anybody's listening for work, hi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't work there anymore. I, I didn't work there anymore. Anyway. The, 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 the. Actually, that's a good fucking point. <laughs> uh, the business went under. Um, <laughs> that's a good point. So it's such a good point. Um, my boss tried to be fun, and it was. I got to the point of like where she would sort of try to get in with everybody and trying to get in with groups and. Uh, Shit! Yeah, fuck it. I'm telling the story. We got invited to a birthday party for her. <coughs> uh, a bunch of the people from work. One turned up. Oh. So yeah. If you've ever seen The Office, the UK or the US, it's a very similar thing. She wasn't as bad as him, but it was a very awkward thing. So I've told that story, and now I'm fucking sacked from any future jobs. Fuck them. They come up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Welcome to Life of Me. Ruining my fucking life mm. on my own, basically. Uh, so back to Victoria. <laughs> well, what would you like to be doing uh, later in life? You've got plans for this year, haven't you? Yeah, I am going over to for this year. I'm going over to um to London, actually. Woo, London! Yeah. I'm still like, <laughs> I'm still a bit like like is that like a suicide move or yes, a yes, move? it is. I mean, when is it? Is it? Oh, it's about August. <laughs> eh? Yeah, I think you'll be okay. fine then, because the vaccine rollout seems to be going seems to be going fairly well for this year. Mm-hmm. How they're going to keep up with it every year? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea. I think you might be okay. I, I, most people are social distancing, but some people aren't. Yes, That's but, the but, but this is going to be August when it's going to be hotter, and people are going to be out, and lockdown's not going to be in, in force anymore. Oh uh, yeah. Well, they've done a good job though. Last uh, well, you, year. when do you know when you're getting the vaccine? No, I don't. I think um, the government is like. The government here is um, organizing like vaccine centers in every neighborhood, so people can just go and queue for it. Okay. I think we're getting a yeah, but we don't know anything yet. To be yeah. fair, though, Singapore is like <clears throat> like a, a city nation with like. Was oh, it mainly city based rather than? Something? No, no, no. I mean, it's just one big city. All right. Okay. Right. right. That's like yeah. How many people? Five million? Six million? I think 7 million. 7 million people. So I have no idea. It should be easier for them to get everybody vaccinated than for, like, the UK. Right, right. But okay. it's, like, so still spread out a little bit, at least. Yeah, because you've got, like, tiny fucking villages and shit everywhere. And that. Yeah. Oh, wait, it is 5 million. I just Googled it. Okay. I was right. right. Woo! Well done, Craig. Unbelievable. The only reason I knew that is because Scotland's 5 million as well. Unbelievable. Mm. Well, if you'd got that wrong, what I will have said is... Neat points! <laughs> prick! That would have happened right there. That's, uh, that was specifically done for you, Victoria. <laughs> I love it! Oh my god! Wait, do you have, like, just snippets of the show recorded? So you can... Just just that like... one. Just that one. Um, <laughs> when Craig said I had to leave earlier on... It's because you started talking about uh, going to university and stuff. And I was going to ask, did you get any points? <laughs> <laughs> and if you'd said no or yes or whatever, because you'd have been like, well, I didn't get any points. And I'd be like, of course you didn't. <laughs> Neat points! Prick! Neat points! Prick! Prick! 
That's why I was laughing. That's why I had to leave the room. Oh, <laughs> oh I love it so much, man. It's, so it's... we're going to play that for Michael Hines. We, we, sorry, we have already played that for Michael Hines. <laughs> Unbelievable. We're in a weird time loop right now. Yeah. We have to stick to canon. We have to stick to the fucking... Mm-hmm. Keep to kayfabe, Craig. Yeah, to keep to kayfabe. So what is it you're, <laughs> you're doing in, in London? What is it you're going to study? Gender, media, and culture. Nice. And what is uh, yeah, the plan career from that? I have no idea. I'm just hoping to eventually start my own publication. So I guess I'm looking towards that. Oh, yeah, I remember you talking to me about that. You I feel like it's kind of dangerous thing. to plan right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're like me, just yeah, do stuff Yeah, I feel like it's kind of dangerous to yeah. do any plan. It's such a crazy time there now. You just have to sort of go with, mm. go with the shit and then see how it goes. Go with the shit, yeah. Go with the shit. That's why podcasts are great. Yeah. Because when we <laughs> met, it was actually, I'm going to claim credit here, it was actually me that uh, pushed Victoria into doing a podcast. Look at the way you fucking leaned back like an absolute Tory cunt. Yes, yes indeed, that's what I do. Oh, I'm an angel investor with no money. I invest ideas. Yes, I, I invest. Oh. I invest. Knee point, prick. For that one. <laughs> I invest happiness in the suggestibility. Mm-hmm. Could your mum and dad listen to this podcast, <laughs> Victoria? No. <laughs> just they here, just knee points, prick. And they here. What's the swear? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't think has she sweared on this podcast yet. No. What's the swe- what's the swearing deal in uh, Singapore? Is, is oh, there a cultural thing us, against swearing? Can teach us some swear words. Oh, Chinese swear words. Yes. Hell yes. Is that the level? <laughs> oh my of, god! Is that the level of intellect this podcast has come to? Just... Yes, we're not her podcast. <laughs> we just we just <laughs> <laughs> shit for an hour. We don't do anything worthwhile. <laughs> can you teach us Chinese uh, swear words? Pen it. Then he try and spell it. It's Chinese. I can know the words. Right, okay. I'm, I'm battling in my head to like actually teach actual swear words or like just some ridiculous. Actual swear words, please. <laughs> not that we can check. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not that we can disagree with you at any point. <laughs> you can do whatever you want, really. <laughs> you can teach us how to ask for a dinner, but we think we're calling each other assholes. Yep. That would be actually really funny, but we have, <laughs> we've learned to call each other an arsehole. We've just learned, dinner please. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, uh, what do you want to know? I actually don't know a lot because I don't swear a lot. Okay, right. How the okay. hell did you two meet? <laughs> I don't know, it's a weird place, isn't it? Yeah, it's fucked up. No. Okay. Well, start, let's start with fucked up. <laughs> let's... Just start with that since we started. Let's just say the worst swear word that you know. I I don't know what the worst is. Second um, worst. Darn it. <laughs> Confound it all. Fuck um, off. The worst. Mm. Just, it just pick anything out of heart. Okay. Fuck is gun. Fun. Say that again. Gun. Like, gun. Gun. Oh. Yeah, but like, more of a G sound. Like gun, but like less. Gun. Pronounced G. Yeah. Gun. A gun. 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 Yeah, that's right. That's right. Which one? The- Say it again. Gun. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Gun. What does that mean? Fuck. Fuck. Okay. It's so Gun close off. To, it's so close to cunt as well. Aye. Cunt. Gun. Gun. Like. Gun off. Amazing. That means fuck off in Chinese. <laughs> How do you say off? 
I I actually don't know how you say fuck off. I think people just say chi si ba. Then they catch Which that, is go again? and die. <laughs> chi si ba. I like that one. That's not Australian, but that's a great one. Chi si ba. Yeah. Chi si ba. Chi. Chi. Chuizlba. Chu. 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 It's like, uh, like, like chu, but chu. 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 Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Again, this and... one, this is not going to work great for his um. <laughs> this is going to sound terrible. Chuizlba. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of right. Chuizlba. Okay. Awesome. Cheers, little bat. So we can expect uh, a lot of that today from Craig. <laughs> uh, perfect. We're letting the swear word. I think we'll move. <laughs> so Don't cheers, little bat. I can speak Chinese. I'm fluent. I can say fuck, go and die. Yes. <laughs> so Victoria, what's the name of your podcast? Oh, okay, okay. Oh, oh you got one. There perfect, is, right. There is a, there is a, a worse one. Okay. It's um, F your mother. Mm, okay. I like that one. Okay. It's Chao Ni Ma. Chao Ni Ma. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, that is brilliant. Slips off the tongue nicely. Mm. It's a beautiful one. I mm. like it. Chao Ni Ma. Amazing. So is that, like, is that in a... When you say Chinese, is that like Mandarin or like one of the other Chinese languages? Like what one is that? That's yeah, that's Mandarin. Mandarin, that's okay. Yeah. But, see, Victoria could speak about seven million languages. She could speak Malay. She could speak <laughs> Chinese. She could speak multiple Chineses. Yeah. <laughs> she could speak English. So, like learning the as Craig puts it, the multiple Chineses. Um, is that like? Learning, um, like different dialects in Scotland and stuff like that. Ah, uh, uh, this is is apparently sound a little bit different. Yeah, it is. It it's kind of the same. It's like just learning different accents, basically. Really, so slang, like slang, um, terms, slang terms, and like different things. Well, not really, because like some of them have an entire different pronunciation. Mm-hmm. Like an entire different language, essentially, like Cantonese. Mm-hmm. Well, we have we have that like in in Dundee, as a, a completely different language to what the rest of Scotland speak. Uh, Dundee has a. Th- so how many slangs are there? Oh God! Oh, you've caught me there. Right. right. Okay. Right. Um, oh shit! It's almost impossible to answer. I think. It's almost impossible to answer because I think every twenty miles <laughs> there's like a new. <laughs> Well, how would you say, how far is it Edinburgh? 40 miles. Something like that, a wee bit further. Aye. About 40 miles. Every 40 miles or so, there's a new dialect to pick up. Like Ed- Edinburgh and Glasgow oh. are like two completely different dialects. Dundee, which is about 40, minute, 40 minutes away from here, is just a completely different, it sounds crazy. Uh, it's the worst, actually. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Okay, right, so, so is where you live kind of like in the middle or like away from every other part? We are um I'm trying to think. We are about twenty minutes away from the nearest city. Don't fail one, which is a really small city. Oh. Sometimes not even class to city, just a large town a lot of the time. Mm. But um the most well known city we're near is uh, St Andrews. Uh, but we are mostly mm-hmm. we are mostly like farmland area. We're in like a small village. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. So, in the area that you're in, is there like a a completely separate like language or dialect that other people would not know? Not really. It's just as we tend to speak. We have been told that we tend to speak in this area. Uh, really, really quickly, mm. uh, which we've actually slowed down a lot of the time well, for podcasts. The issue is that I'm so used to speaking fast that mm. when I try and slow down and use words that are not slang, 
my mouth is not used to it. Yeah. So I fuck them up a lot. Yeah. And uh, that could that could be quite annoying on the podcast where yeah. I think I'm trying to say something more clearly. Yeah. And because I'm trying to say it more clearly, I fuck up. We should record just us talking because we kind of even on the videos we record, we kind of still slow it down because we're kind of we know I'm that we're being part, yeah. recorded. Um, but a normal conversation just consists of just going uh, 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 just <laughs> sound like a broken wish. Robocop. Yeah, shit. Like for instance, who ate all the, who ate all the, of that? Is who ate all that? Uh. And we will understand that straight away. So it's just who ate all that? <laughs> really quickly done, and it's just it's loads of ridiculous language. Mm. Crazy. Anyway, Victoria. So, what's the name of your podcast, Victoria? The name? The Truly Other Podcast. Okay. And, uh... Yeah. Excellent. And, uh, well, thanks for joining us, Victoria. It's been much appreciated. Thank you for having me. This was fun. Awesome, awesome. Is there anything else you'd like to promote before you go? Um, no, check out my website, I guess, victoriatry.com. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Perfect.